So for this year's contest at Circuit Digest, one of the development boards you can use to build your projects is the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. If you want to know how to use this development board or what kind of projects you can build using it, then this video is right for you. Also, if you want to get this development board for free, you can participate in our online design contest IoT and Edge AI Project Challenge. All you have to do is submit an interesting project idea, get your development board and build something interesting. For the best projects, we are also giving up to 7 lakh in cash price and all of this is possible thanks to our contest sponsor DigiKey. DigiKey is a global leader in cutting-edge commerce distribution of electronic components and automation products worldwide. They provide more than 15.3 million components from over 2,900 manufacturers with products in stock available for immediate shipment. Also, with their fast shipping and excellent customer support, you can always trust that your products will arrive on time and in top condition. So do remember to check out DigiKey for your next project. Also, all information about the contest can be found at the link in the description. That being said, let's get into the video. So, in this video, I'll show you what's special with this Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi board and how easy it is to build simple IoT projects using this board. On a first look, you will notice that the Arduino Uno R4 looks very similar to the Arduino Uno R3 and even the pins match exactly the same. This is intentional because every shield or project that you have built for the Arduino Uno R3 can now be upgraded to the Arduino Uno R4 without much hardware change. Okay, now let's get familiar with the important hardware changes that has come with this board. Again, if you take a look, the first thing you will notice is this ESP32S uh, chip and then we have another microcontroller over here. In fact, if you check out this diagram, you will notice that there are two microcontrollers on this development board. One is the ESP32S3 for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality from Espressif. And the other is a Renesas 32-bit microcontroller, namely the RA4M1. So both of these are very powerful microcontroller. This microcontroller here is used to handle all the GPIOs and this is used for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So in short, it is safe to tell that this board is a beefed up Arduino Uno because of the 32-bit microcontroller and it also combines the ESP32 development board inside it. So it has a lot of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. The next interesting feature on this board is this 12 cross 8 LED matrix. As you can see there are 12 LEDs here and 8 LEDs here forming a 12 cross 8 LED matrix. Now the best part about this LED matrix is that it can display text, it can be used as an indication LED, it can be used to play games. So whenever you're building projects using LCD and OLED display you might have to interface it externally. But now for quick debugging and quick visualization you can use this LED which really come in handy. The next thing you should know is that it comes with Arduino IoT cloud support. So this board makes it very easy to build IoT projects. I'm going to show you soon how you can control few things from the Arduino IoT cloud. So let's come back to that. Then in our Uno boards, most of us would have used 10-bit ADC, but now you get 14-bit ADC thanks to the Renesas microcontroller. Apart from that, you're also getting a 12-bit DAC module which was not present in the Uno. So the uh, Uno R4 now gets a DAC module allowing you to interface uh, small microphones, digital microphones and new voice recognition and whatnot which was already done using the ESP32. Apart from that, it supports CAN bus if you are into automotive projects and it also has HID support so you can use this as a mouse or a keyboard emulated device. We have also given the pinout for this Arduino Uno R4 board. You can see that it is very similar to the old Arduino Uno R3, but each pin now has more functions. Like I told you earlier, it also has few of the ESP32 pins uh, pulled out. So if you want to do anything specific with the ESP32 GPIO pins, that is also possible. So apart from that, most of this is similar to the Arduino Uno R3, making it very easy to upgrade your old projects. Okay, now let me show you how to quickly build IoT projects using this Arduino Uno R4 and the Arduino IoT cloud platform. So here we have the Arduino Uno R4 board connected to a DHT11 temperature sensor and I have connected this whole setup to my laptop over here. 
So to get started, click on get started. Make sure you're already logged in. If not, you can sign up. It's free. Once you're in, it will ask if you want to start making an Arduino cloud. Click on let's make. And then you have to install something called the Arduino cloud agent. Click on install to install it. But I have already installed it. So I'll just launch the app. Once the app is open, you can click on go to Arduino cloud and it will take you to Arduino cloud. And here there are four things which you should know. One is sketches, the other is devices and then things and then dashboard. So let's start with devices. Click on add device. Just click on Arduino and it will start searching for this board. Okay, so now it has found the Arduino Uno R4 board, which is this one on so and so com port, click on configure and then it will take up to five minutes. So let's wait. Okay, so now our device is ready. Let's give it a name. So I'm going to call it Valen. Click on next. Okay, now it says congratulations. You're all set. Your device Valen has been successfully set. Click on done and it will take you back to the Arduino cloud platform and you can see that our device is currently offline. Let's get that corrected. To do that, we'll go into sketches. Okay, now under sketches, there is nothing. So let's create a thing and come back to this. So the thing is something which is connected to your Arduino board. Say for example, this sensor over here can be considered as a thing if you have a uh, if you have an LED or a motor and you want to control it, then that output can also be considered as a thing. So any input or output con connected to your board can be considered as a thing. So what I'm going to do is I want to first show you how to blink an LED by pressing a button on the cloud. We have an onboard LED over here. So we'll be pressing a button on the cloud here. We'll create a button and we'll press it and control the LED on the board and then we will read the temperature value from this sensor and send it to the cloud. So first let's start with controlling an LED. So I am going to associate a device to this thing. My device is Valen and then I am going to create a variable. Let me call it LED because I am going to control the LED from the button on Arduino cloud. And uh, this will be a boolean variable because it's going to turn on or off. So it's a boolean and then variable permission. You can keep read only or read and write. So if you want to write to the cloud, we will select read and write. If you want to only read from the cloud, we will select read only. In our case, we are only going to read the data from the cloud and change the LED so we can keep it read only. But just for the purpose of demonstration, we'll keep read and write and then the variable update policy. So that the, the function related to this variable will either be updated on change. Whenever there is a change on the IoT cloud, the function on the Arduino board will update or it will update periodically for every uh, 10 seconds or 5 seconds on whatever you want. So in our case, I want the LED to change only when there is a change on the IoT dashboard. So I will select on change and click on add variable so we have created a variable the last value is unknown and the last update is unknown and another thing that you want to note here is a network we have to configure the wi-fi credentials so that the Arduino you know board here can connect to the internet so my wi-fi name is uh, semicon media 5g so let me do that And let me give my password. Okay, fine. So click on save and then we'll go back to our cloud platform. So you can see that the device is still offline. That's because we haven't uploaded any sketch to the device. So what you can do is you can move on to sketch over here or you can go back and click on sketches. Both will take you to the same page. So now if you come into sketches, you will see that a new sketch has been created for Valen just now and it is untitled. So let's get into this sketch. Okay, so here we have a code which is already written for us. On the top, you will see something called thingsproperties.h is added. That's because we have already created a thing called LED and we also have some functions being created. Apart from that, we also have a secret uh, SSID and a password 
which we have entered earlier if you can see uh, the ssid is semicon media 5g which i entered earlier so all of that is automatically taken here and into the code we have initialized serial monitor and then we have initialized orino cloud and inside void loop you'll find a line here which updates gets update from the orino cloud and there is also a function uh, which will get activated whenever there is a change in the orino cloud so before I actually go and create something on the Arduino cloud, let me quickly show you how to upload the code. So I will remove the IoT feature by uh, commenting this line and then let's uh, do a simple uh, LED blink. Okay, so now the code is uploaded as you can see here and on the board you can notice that the LED is blinking for every one second. So now what we'll do is instead of blinking the LED, we'll get the value from the cloud and based on the value, we will change the status of the LED. To do that, let's go back and click on dashboard and we'll create a new dashboard. Okay, here you have two modes. One is to view the dashboard, another is to edit the dashboard. We'll click on edit dashboard and add a switch to control our LED. The name will be switch only and then we have to link the variable to which we have created earlier. So the variable we created is LED. I'm linking that and then clicking on done. Now, if I go back to view mode, you can see that I can turn on and turn off this LED. So now what I have to do is I have to go back to the sketch and instead of blinking the LED, I'll get the value from the cloud and if the value of LED. So LED is already declared over here as a Boolean variable. So I'll be just using it. If LED is equal to equal to one, then I need my LED to be on. Similarly, if LED is equal to equal to zero, I need my LED to be off. Now I will stop blinking and get the value from the cloud and upload this. Now, one more thing that you can notice is you can also upload directly via the USB. So now the board is connected via the USB. That's what I'm doing, uploading via port. If you have a paid version, you can also upload as an OTA, like an over the air update. You can just toggle this and the first time you give the Wi-Fi credentials, your board will be synced to the cloud. Then you can always upload using the cloud. So that's an interesting feature, but it's available only for the paid version. Now let's wait till the program gets uploaded. Okay, so now the code is uploaded. Let's go back to the dashboard and we can see if you are able to control this LED from the switch. Let me turn on and as you can see, the LED is turned on. Let me bring the LED uh, to the camera so you can see the LED. If I turn off, you can see the LED turns off. If I turn on, you can see the LED turns on. Not only that, you can also go to your uh, things uh, menu and here you can see that the variable which we created called LED. Yeah, so now you can see that the variable called LED, the last value is true because it's still on and it was last updated on 1416, sorry, 1616. And you can also see that our device VLAN is currently online and the last activity was at so and so time. So yeah, it makes a lot of things very easy. You can also see your device health, the updates in the last seven days, one days, one hour. So it gives you a lot of options on the Arduino cloud itself. Now for the next step, let us read the value from the DHT11 sensor and update it on the Arduino IoT cloud. So uh, let's go back here and let's create another thing for our uh, sensor over here. We'll just use the same thing and create a new variable, but it's up to you. You can also create a new thing and a new variable if you want. Okay, so now we are back with our Arduino sketch. Now I have to interface a DHT11 sensor. To do that, you'll find all the required libraries over here. Just search for DHT11 
and click on include it will automatically include no need to download and then you can see all the examples i want to read temperature so i will click that so this is the example code i will need this uh, instance So now I'm going to read the temperature value and print it on the serial monitor. And also we have to show it on our dashboard. So to show it on our dashboard, let's get into our dashboard. So here is our dashboard. Let me open it and add a widget. So you have so many options. You can do visualization in terms of gauge, chart, percentage. But for demonstration, I'm going to do a chart and the minimum value for my temperature will be 5 and the maximum value for my temperature would be 40 and then I can add a variable I'll call this temperature again and then I'll make it an integer because in the program we already saw that it was an integer so again we will keep it as read write and instead of updating it on change i will periodically update it every say two seconds add variable okay now we have another variable called temperature so we'll go back to the dashboard and link it to the variable called temperature now that's done now let's go back to our code go back to our sketch and then here we can see that there is a new function created called on temperature change but we are not going to do anything based on temperature change so we we'll leave that empty now it is going to read the temperature into the variable called temperature and since the cloud also uses the same variable it is already declared i'm just going to remove this so we will read the temperature and it will automatically get updated to the cloud because we have synced it with the variable name temperature. So yeah, that's it. Let's upload this code. Okay, I have a small error. Uh, I don't know where I did it. Okay, I made this inside the setup, which is a mistake. It should have been done outside like it is shown in the example code over here. And also I have not connected my uh, DHT to pin number 2. I have connected my DHT 11 to pin number 7. So let me quickly change that as well and upload. Okay, now the code is uploaded and before we go into our dashboard and check the values, let's quickly check if the serial print is working. We can find the serial monitor over here. Now we can go back to the dashboard and click on view. And here you can see that we are reading the same value and it is getting updated every two seconds. Not only that, you can also download the historic data if you have used a historic visualization. You can change and look how it will look on mobile and you can share it with other people if you have a paid plan or you can just visualize it on your own. Not just the temperature values but the LED toggle button should also be working. As you can see, if I turn it back on, it turns back on now there's a slight delay because i have hard coded a delay in my code but you can remove it and build whatever you want you can have multiple buttons if you go to edit you can see there are a lot of widgets like slider messages scheduler everything has its own uh, unique purpose and you can see all of that over here you have annotations you have interactions so there are so many stuff which you can build with this Arduino iot cloud platform in the free version itself so yeah that is all for this video hope i have given you enough content to motivate you to build your own iot project using the Arduino uno r4 and the Arduino iot cloud platform that being said this is ashwin signing off have a great day bye bye